The original Cadwallader farm consisted of 248 acres, which were subsequently partitioned to various family members. One parcel was eventually sold in 1841 to Henry McCall, who built Ellerslie, the estate that would become the core of Cadwallader Park. Work on the park began in 1887, following the purchase of Ellerslie Mansion from George Farley. A committee of the Common Council for the City of Trenton sought a location that would become the park. Frederick Law Olmsted, considered America's premier landscape designer and best known for his design of Central Park in New York City, was contacted. Though only one-tenth the size of Central Park, Olmsted applied the same approach in the design of Cadwallader Park. The park holds the distinction of being the only Olmsted design park in the state of New Jersey. It is also known as its last great park. The park officially opened in 1902. The 105 acre green space is Trenton's oldest and largest park. It is named for the Cadwallader family. Cadwallader was a noted physician and lived for a while near Trenton, where he became the chief of the city's legislative branch. In addition to designing Cadwallader Park, the Olmsted firm was also responsible for much of the early design of the park's adjacent residential neighborhoods, such as Cadwallader Heights, Hiltonia, Hillcrest, and Berkeley Heights. The park includes several monuments and statues, such as the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, a Civil War era cannon, Swamp Angel, a statue of John Roebling, civil engineer and designer of many suspension bridges, including the Brooklyn Bridge, a 9-11 memorial, and the final resting place of Briar Patch, the last bear to be displayed at the park. Several years ago, the park suffered a major decline. This was due in part to community misuse and decreasing municipal support. However, there are presently steps being taken to improve the park. These steps include the installation of new park benches. In, in 2022, a boat launch was established on the canal where canoeing skills are taught. This program was introduced by the Department of Recreation, National Resources and Culture. The program provides kayaks, canoes, and lessons. Repaving of the pavilion. This space is currently used by community groups, including Trenton Skate and local fitness organizations. A new improved playground was created. The state funded tree planting is doing very well. Newly planted trees seem to be establishing themselves. The ash trees formerly in a park were ravished by the ash borer insect. It is hoped the new plantings will keep the park green and pleasant long into the future. What was once the area that included the deer paddock is now the Cadwalder Park natural area. It was designed to attract nesting herons, eastern box turtles, bees, and butterflies. Isles Inc., a community-based development and environmental organization, proposed a plan to convert the former barns located in that area into a nature center. However, they were unable to secure funding for that project. The original use of those barns was used to house the Trenton Mounted Police Horses. There are currently six park rangers employed by the park. The park was recently honored with a prestigious award in the Olmsted 200 Challenge, which was sponsored by the Library of Congress in honor of Olmsted's 200th birthday and Earth Day. The report that led to that national award was prepared by Evie Timberlake, Becca Flemmer, Randy Baum, and David Bostad. The report captures distinctive aspects of Cadwallader Wallet Park in the context of Olmsted's design. It proudly hangs at the Library of Congress. The mansion was built in 1848 by noted architect John Norman. Norman was hired by Henry McCall to design a summer home in the style of an Italianate villa. In 1881, Farley purchased Ellerslie from McCall for $25,000. Seven years later, the city of Trenton purchased a mansion and surrounding acres for $50,000. The city's first museum opened at Ellerslie in 1889. 
Hello, I'm David Bostad. I'm a, a longtime Trenton resident and a trustee at Cadwallader Park. And how long have you been involved with the mansion and the park? How many years have you been well, involved? I moved to Trenton in the 1970s for a state job and liked it, loved it here. And so I've been involved with this park um, since the 1970s and with the museum since the 1980s. Can you tell us in what ways has the park changed since you've been involved? be it positive or negative? Well, there's both positive and negative. Uh, there have been some wonderful events and you just wish they could always be continued. For example, uh, for several years there was a bike race uh, which started <clears throat> from downtown, came up State Street, looped around the park and then went back down for uh, eight or nine different loops. So you just wish that could continue, but it wasn't practical to continue that, uh, that series of bike races. So you miss some of the things that didn't happen. Um, however, other things are on the plus side. Uh, for example, there's a pavilion that I can see uh, looking out towards State Street, a pavilion in the park that was rebuilt at enormous expense uh, to exactly match the specifications of the original pavilion, which burned down many years ago. As the city's largest park, what level of municipal support does this, does this park receive? Uh, the, the park has gotten different levels of support over the years, depending on the priorities of the mayor. Uh, mayor Art Holland, beloved in the city of Trenton, uh, was a great supporter of the park and particularly a supporter of the renovation of Ellerslie. Art Holland uh, removed the monkeys that had been converted, a mistake. Mistakes are made in the 1930s. Some people thought it was a good idea under the WPA to get the uh, Works Progress Administration money to uh, convert the first floor to a monkey house. It was just not a good idea. And it was Art Holland who uh, removed the monkeys and got the uh, grants uh, with his staff, gave priority to renovating Ellerslie, which was a catalyst for greater use of Ken Walter Park. How do you think the park would benefit if it were under the jurisdiction of the Mercer County Park System as opposed to the city? Or do you think it would benefit by being under the arm of Mercer County Park System? Uh, that, that's an idea, a durable idea that comes and goes that if it was a state park or a county park, it might be better administered. But really, uh, Reed Gussiora, the current mayor, has been a big supporter of the park, and it could hardly be better than it is now. Uh, he's attracted funding, state funding especially, to replant areas of the park that were uh, damaged terribly by the Emerald Ash Borer. What does the museum and the park do to attract people into the park? Like, what's planned for the park? What type of events are planned for this park and this museum, say, for this upcoming summer 2023? Well, there's a wonderful uh, a symbiotic relationship between the museum and the park. The museum attracts people to the park, and people come to the museum in part because they want to see Olmsted's last great urban park. So it's a wonderful symbiotic relationship. Uh, the museum continuously has openings during the year, uh, sometimes as many as one a month, but more frequently, or usually I try to keep an exhibit up for about three months. So there's a continuing parade of exhibits at the museum that attract people to the openings and then afterward to stroll at their own leisure. And the park, people uh, come to the park and they invariably want to see, well, what's inside that mansion? Even if they don't know it's a museum, they want to find out. So it's a, it's a great relationship, park plus museum. Are there any plans for the area that was formerly the deer paddock? 
And what else is planned for the park that you know of? Uh, well, I get tours of the park, and we always go over to that area that was the deer paddock. Um, that area of the park was never entirely successful because the Olmsted firm advised them, advised the uh, Trenton City Council to purchase the Butolf estate, which is now Hiltonia. Anything else you want to add about the museum? Well, I love the museum, I love the park. It's a great resource for the uh, residents of the city of Trenton. But let's not forget that it's the greater Trenton area. Our membership, our uh, supporters come up and down the Delaware Valley. They come across from Pennsylvania. They live in the suburbs of Lawrence and Hamilton and Ewing. Uh, this, uh, this museum has many people that love it. So uh, if we can maintain that interest, that enthusiasm, the future is very bright mm -hmm. for at Waller Park. My name is Jane Malloy, and I am a trustee at the Trent City Museum. I've been a trustee for nine years now, uh, since about 2014. So, and I live in Trenton, born in Trenton. Uh, my connection to the museum uh, runs a little deeper because. My uncle Thomas A. Malloy was one of the people who was involved in the founding of the uh, Trent Museum Society. Can you tell us a little bit um, uh, exactly what the museum does to engage people within the community? The museum has events exhibitions, collections uh, that are connected to history within the city um, that goes from people, places, things, uh, potteries, the Trent Public School System, there have been talks and lectures and collections that have connected those issues or, or things in the city of Trenton. Uh, I'm involved as a co-chair on the events committee, so the events tend to be more engaging in terms of community. They can range from music events to we're having a tea, Mother's Day tea, which is coming up. Uh, and um, every Friday, every last Friday of the month, we have a Freedom Friday. We have coordinated with some other organizations in the city to have African drumming workshop here. Um, there is going to be an African drumming workshop in every section of the city. So. Trent City Museum is actually doing the West War section. And um, so those are some of the things that we do to engage the, the community. I think we can do more. I think we need to do more. I've co-curated two exhibitions. Uh, go, there'll be a third one at the end of this year called Next. And those exhibitions, the first one um, was called If These Quilts Could Talk, which examined the textile artistry of quilters in the community. And I co-curated that with Diane Chacon, who is also a trustee here, a black woman here on the board. And so that was the first one. The second one was called Stand Up Men, which was four artists from using different types of media uh, to convey their, uh, their art forms. There was a sculptor, there was a photographer, a muralist, and they 
they had a wonderful exhibition here. And that was probably about two years ago. So, and then the next one we're trying to, and they, all of these, I should say, all of these exhibitions were all black artists. And how are these events advertised? How do you reach out to the community for these events? Most of our advertising is on Facebook, other social media, Instagram, Twitter. We also have a, a newsletter that goes out via email. So there's an email blast. We also advertise in, uh, I think there's a, a paper called US One which we put the, get the events and exhibitions, upcoming events and exhibitions on there. Okay, so what do you see is today's connection between the museum and the park? I think that the connection between the museum and the park, unfortunately, is just that, that the museum is in the park and I think that we need to engage more in some of the things that go on in the park and have the museum have some sort of connection or involvement in some of those things and, and by extension opening the doors up through those community events in the park so that in, in people who've never been in the park, which unfortunately there are a lot of people in this city, people of color who have never been in this park, have been in this museum. So that is unfortunate and that is something that I am trying to change and I think some of the other trustees are very committed to seeing that change that people who have never been here actually have a stake in this because they're trying residents, so they should be. But I think that now the museum is connected to the city a little more in terms of their calendar and trying to figure out how we can be an extension of the community events that are going on in the park.